All right, where are you, Hercules motor? Right there. Man, I don't know why, but for some reason, I need to take this Hercules motor apart again. As I was watching and editing it, I just come up with ideas, like, like I really want to look and see how the windings are overheated, you know, like. So basically, this is just going to be a little deeper dive into this motor, and, and I'll be testing her out again. First, I'm going to get it apart. Alright, well, I've been just eyeing this thing up here. And I've been noticing, I noticed this in the video too, and I can't remember if I really noticed the significance of this back when I made the original video. But these start windings here are the only ones that are actually cooked. You can see that the run windings here, although they're a little dark here, you can scrape it off, I'm sure, from when these started igniting, started smoking up everything else. But you know you... You go around and all the varnish, or not varnish, but the epoxy, whatever it is, they soak, dip these in when they're, to insulate them or whatever. It's still all intact on the run windings. Then you can see the start windings. They're just, you can just spread all the wires out individually if you wish. And right here they're all crusty. That epoxy literally just burnt right off and it actually it looks like there's some stuff dripped on this wire here I bet you that was that epoxy dripping off onto that wire we notice this one over here is taped and you can actually see this wire here it was touching up against the run winding it was starting to get pretty warm as you can see that's probably what happened here this wire here was probably just starting to show some of its strands so, I mean, the run windings got pretty darn warm. Do you know, I'm starting to wonder if maybe the centrifugal switch, I can't remember if it was stuck or not when I first looked at it. I'm thinking in the video there was probably the first time I ever, like, actuated it. it looked like it was a little bit sticky, but nothing horrendous. And as you can see now, it is kind of hard to push back. But it's, uh, it's definitely functioning. I could give that just a quick spray with WD-40 just to see. I happened to notice while I was editing the video, you couldn't hear that centrifugal switch clicking. Could have been that the motor just wasn't spinning fast enough to throw those weights out there. Or maybe it was sticking. Didn't sound like it was spinning very fast. Probably only about half the RPM it should. I'm having a hard time really being able to find any special spots, you know, that look like they've gotten extra hot, indicating that's where a short had started. If we look on the other side here, it's just the same exact thing. Start windings are just chooched, although this one here looks like it, it's crispy, but the winding, the epoxy is still there holding the windings together. Hmm, that's interesting. Same with this. Hmm. The run windings again seem to be all right. Well, it looks like that wire right there got a little hot and started to bubble. I can't personally say I find where it would be shorting out. I don't know. You know, you'd think you'd see one spot that's extra crispy. Be it's looking like for the most part, it's just even start winding cook. It's making me wonder if maybe the centrifugal switch got stuck and the motor just started belligerently overheating and then eventually caused the start windings to short out because they burnt all their epoxy off. Maybe that's when whoever it was, my grandpa or my uncle, took the motor apart and found these cooked wires here that were resting against the winding and thought maybe that was the problem and taped it up. It still kicked the breaker and that's when they give up on it. Oh yeah, you can see that wire up there was getting nice and toasty. <laughs> Man, did this motor get hot. But it kind of makes me wonder, like what if I just chop the wire that feeds power to the start winding? I wonder if the primary winding is actually messed up, if it would actually, like, try to work. And if I just give it a spin, it would take off and work. I don't really want to mess around with the wires too much, even though, I mean, this thing's cooked. I mean, who cares, I guess. But if that overheated start winding did end up burning through somewhere and started touching the start winding,
then it's still gonna be just over amping. If that's the case, then I'll just maybe go around and kinda move all these start windings away from the run windings and see if that makes a difference. I don't know why, it'd be just super cool to see this thing sit there and work. Except unfortunately, this side here, you can see I got way too excited with the air compressor and blasted all the wick out of the hole there. There we go, she's ready to plug in. Well, I won't be doing it in here, because the breaker could possibly kick, and if it does, then it's lights out for the whole shed, and you've got to wander back to the house to turn the breaker on, so. Plus, I don't know if I want to stress my house wiring. So, we're going to head to the shop and test this baby out. I went ahead and kind of dug that wick around and pushed it down back into the bearing and it seems to be taking oil really good. I give both the bearings a bunch of fresh oil. She's spinning like she never used to. There, well no more awkward up close shots. Can't see the motor. <laughs> I've got a tripod nowadays. Now we can get that awesome angle. If the unit isn't in really good working order, I don't like to touch them when they're running because obviously we got a shorted winding. Who knows if it's shorting the ground. I left the ground unhooked as you can see just because if that is the case I don't want it to end up kicking a breaker. I'm trying to see if I can get this thing to actually run. Let's see if this old beast will come to life. Let's see if I can run to the breaker quick enough. It almost looked like it tried. I gotta look at the footage. I just looked at the footage and I saw a spark blast out of here. Well, judging from where that spark came out, she looks like she's uh, pretty crispy. I think we're not getting good connection there anymore. Yeah, actually the strands are kind of ripping off too. Well, it's still tight on there. So I just aggressively wiggled it around and we'll see if that give us any kind of connection. Oh look it's actually got some... I didn't notice that before. A bunch of smoke in it or something. No! <sighs> okay we're getting ultra redneck now. You can see I just yanked that wire right out of its old spot there. It wasn't in there very good. And we just kind of snaked it back through this way and hooked her straight up here. Apparently that's hooked on to the neutral post. See what happens. Hmm. Well, this was another classic case of I didn't look close enough before I made my assessment. I thought it was that connection down there. You know, I guess if I were smart, I would have just played around with the multimeter with that connection just to see if it actually was making a connection. But actually, first I undid the tape on that wire there, that white wire, and as you can see, it's not even right through the wires. I don't know why they felt they needed... Oh, well, there's a spot there that's melted through, I guess. It actually kind of went up behind this run winding here and went underneath and then was connected to here. I happened to notice it felt pretty loose in there and yeah it pulled right off right here. This whole wire man like I moved it a little bit and the insulation just kind of all broke up back in here. And if you look really closely you can actually see the strands right there and right back in there and they're all green. Man did that wire overheat. Well, I was trying to strip just a little bit right here, and it just kind of self-stripped itself way up back here. That insulation is just done. But hey, we got some wire to work with now. All right, is now going to be the moment of truth? No. <laughs> what? you got to be kidding me. Okay, now this wire used to be behind, between these two nuts, and then our main wire coming in, used to be in between these two nuts. So the wires weren't actually physically touching each other and man just I look back at the footage again and I could see a little bit of sparks shoot out this hole here and then a bunch went straight that way. I literally sandwiched them right beside each other together now. There's no way that won't be making connection with this. I'll show you real quick here I don't know if I actually showed this wire put back together here. So 
Murat's kind of awkward, but probably should find something so that wire isn't touching these windings, but technically they look like they still have their epoxy on them, so actually I could probably shove this up in there, couldn't I? The length I'll go just to get an old piece of junk motor to spin again. Alright, I think I wired this wrong. Now, I made an assumption that they would have one end of the winding have a white wire go to it and the other end of the winding have a black wire coming out of it, you know, to, for hot neutral or whatever, but actually I think I was wrong. It seems as if the run winding is purely just both the white wires and the start winding is both the black wires which are disconnected. So basically what I did was I hooked up hot to one end of the start winding and then I hooked up neutral to one end of the run winding so there's just nothing was happening. At first it was still wired up right. I still had this neutral hooked up down here so it would have been powering the run winding still but then that spark bet you any money was this wire back here that had broke and it just kind of blasted apart. So now I got both the white wires. Well I don't have it hooked up yet but I'm gonna put this neutral back in here and hook it up to here and leave both the black wires which are essentially the hot and neutral for the start winding disconnected. No more start winding. That's actually kind of a good sign if you ask me that nothing was happening when I had hot hooked up to one winding and neutral hooked up to the other because then now that tells me these windings mustn't be shorted out together. Purely just the start winding has a short in it. Another thing too, I could not get a resistance reading through the start winding here. But I can get a resistance reading between the two white wires. So maybe the start winding actually burnt right out and opened up that last time I ran it and it smoked there. I don't know. Don't forget to put my wire shorter preventer 5000 back in there. All right, there we go. If she don't run now, she's going to get forgotten about for another 10 years probably. Okay, try number six or whatever the heck it is. Yeah, that's it. Okay, I'm going to spin it up and you turn the breaker on. Look at that. Freaking spins. Do you believe it? <laughs> How long has that been now? What's that, 21 years since I first tried to plug that thing in? Now it finally spins. It's running good, too. That run winding's in good shape. That's neat. I can't believe it. The Hercules lives again. Kind of. Oh, I just touched it accidentally. <laughs> well, I guess it's good. It's already warming up. I'm feeling warm air coming out of it. Google switch is working. That is neat. I'm gonna have to get my power tester. But we're gonna take this to the shed now because we know it's not gonna be shorted out. We're allowed to pull 5.8 amps. What's it pulling? Oh. She pulling 15 amps when she's locked her rotor. Right on, she's not over amping with no load. It's actually a whole amp under its maximum with no load. That seems about right to me. Bearings do definitely have some play in them. Uh, 245 watts in case anybody's interested. She's just working flawlessly. Now the question is, will it run a barrel fan? Oh yeah, I'm doing it. All right, we got her all rigged up here. I just wanted to show you how these old worn out bearings sound with no load on it yet. So 
centrifugal switch. Sounds like it's working great. All right, let's see if she'll do her. She sounds really good. Boy, is that ever a neat sound the motor makes when it's running. It's like you can hear that motor whine all the way up to its top speed. If I had to guess, it probably has something to do with those four windings being pretty overheated. But she still goes. Wow. Those bearings actually quiet right up when you put a little bit of load on them. And the motor's warm, but it's nice and even. No hot spots. 35 degrees Celsius around like the whole motor. 95 degrees Fahrenheit. Okay, let's see how she does with a little bit of actual load on her. Yeah, it does it. See if I can hot swap this before the fan stops. Right on. 5.2 amps, well under. Man, I would have never thought back when I first tried to plug this thing in that someday I'd actually have this thing on a fan actually working. So if anything, this will just be, I guess, what you could say a novelty until someday, if it ever possibly gets restored. You never know, man. Maybe someday in the future, I'll be into rewinding motors and everything. Anyways, if you made her to the end of the video, you are a champ, and I thank you for watching. For the most part... Come on, light. But it kind of makes me... So now I got both the hot or so frick. <laughs> Say the color, dang it. Oh man, this power meter. You just about have to have an angry gorilla helping you to take its plugging out of it. Look at that. <laughs> Except I spun it backwards. Probably gonna cut that all out. <laughs>